All right, listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find James, third chapter of James. And I want you to get Jeremiah 17 and Matthew 12. And we're going to talk about this tongue and this heart of man. Actually, saints of God, the, uh, the, the Bible does tell us that the tongue is, 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 is we're going to give account for, for all that we say. And the heart of man is deceitful, you know, and so we have to learn how to discipline ourselves to allow God to work in the heart and in the tongue. Okay, so this is where we are. And listen, this, this doesn't seem like it should be applied or be necessary for believers. But trust me, the devil does not care about what we're trying to do. He's going to continue to try to pull us back into something that we can, that the Lord brought us out of. And our words, saints of God, are, are very important. They just are very important. And I'm just going to expose scriptures in these two, in these uh, three, three uh, chapters that we're going to go into. I just want you to hear them. I want you to hear what the scripture is saying. And then we want to just see if we can understand how important it is for us to understand that the things that we say and do and every, you see, what's, what's Colossians 3.17 say? Whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So some things that we say, some things that we think, even before we speak them, we, we can't present them to God. We have to be able to present everything. The Bible says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we're going to go into this. Now listen, let's do, uh, let's do Jeremiah first. I just want to read these verses of scripture, and then we're going to spend most of our time in James uh, chapter 3. And uh, we've been there before, but we're just going to go back because it's time to just rehash some things that we've already heard. And uh, so I'm going to be go going to uh, Jeremiah, it's 17th chapter, and it's uh, verses, I think uh, we've got verses uh, 8 through 9 is what we're going to deal with. But I want you to hear it. And it says here, well, I'm going to start with verse 17, just these, uh, these three verses. Uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 7. It said, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Okay. For he shall be as a tree planted by the river, uh, planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year, in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Listen to this verse: The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The question is, who can know it? And verse ten says, "I, the Lord, search the heart; I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings." The saints of God, that's just plain out clear. It's just clear that God is wanting us to bring this tongue under control. It, it, we're going to see in James that it's a deadly poison and it's an unruly evil. And we have to learn how to bridle it. Now, preacher, what are you talking about? We have to make sure that the things that we speak are things that are going to edify, that are going to encourage, and are going to build up. That's what we have to discipline ourselves to do. People are going to make you angry, saints of God. That's just a part of what we have to go through down here. But how we respond to those things is vitally important. And we cannot even think any evil thing because it's going to be held accountable. We're going to be held accountable. And God is going to be judging those things when he comes. We're going to see it. And we're going to see it. So I'm just going to go, before we go over to a, uh, Matthew, I want to go back and read this to you again in your hearing. And again, the seventh verse is just making it sure, making it certain. He says, blessed, okay, is the man that trusts in the Lord. And listen, if we're trusting in God, then we're going to do what God requires. And if we're trusting in God, we're going to believe that God can keep us from doing the things or saying things that are going to be uh, uh, controversial or damaging because words can kill. 
Okay. We can kill with the words that we speak and we gotta be real careful because murder, you know, we cannot kill, you know. We're not we're not physically killing people, but with the words that we speak, you know, we can be we can damage people's spirit. So again, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. That's where our hope is. Everything is in Christ Jesus. Saying. That's where our lives are. And everything that we are expecting comes from Jesus Christ. Nothing that the world has to offer anybody, okay, saved or unsaved, is going to get them to the Lord because everything the world is offering is counterfeit, okay, is false, and it's going to cause lost men to be lost. And we don't want to be in that number. Okay, again, excuse me. For he shall be a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So again, this is, look, this is, this is so that we can know. The Bible said here in this, in this verse of scripture right here that because we are founder we're, we're, we're rooted in jesus christ okay so all the things that are going to come against us god is going to see us through it even though listen uh, uh what do you say here and the our, our roots are planted by the waters and they spread out their roots by the river so that means our root is getting good good solid foundation up under the up under the earth it's got water to feed it and it's going to be strong it may not you know it may be trouble on the surface but underneath there's a foundation something that's not going to be shaken and it says here again uh and shall not see the a heat when it cometh but her leaf shall be green so look he's talking about the, the drought coming up upon the, the land but even that tree that's planted by the, the waters with its, with its roots deeply rooted under the river is going to produce fruit. Huh? And that's the way we have to be. We're going to, we're, we got to produce fruit. And in spite of all the things and the circumstances that are going on in the world, we have to produce fruit. And what is that fruit? That is love, joy, peace, long suffering, generous, meekness, temperance. And all the other things that apply to righteousness. This is what we're going to be. We're not going to complain. Huh? We're not going to complain. Why? Because God's got us. Huh? We're not going to complain because people who are looking to us, they don't need us complaining. They want to see us going through. So that's where we have to be. We have to be in a place. We have to be in a place where people can see Christ in us. And that's where we have to be. And that's why God did what he did. He gave us life. And that life is in us right now. Okay, and that life is going to teach us how to live, how to walk, and how to talk. Okay, so here we go again. Uh, again, uh, ninth verse again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know what? This is the heart of man before he was born again. Do you understand? We were carnal, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and that heart was deceitful. And it lured us all into sin. Listen, Eve knew full well what God had said to her because she and she responded when Satan said, uh, "Did God say?" And she said, "Yeah, we told us we should we couldn't eat or to touch the tree." Okay, so she knew that. But because he was subtle and he spoke some words that sounded good, and it seemed like this is not so bad after all, and it's a beautiful tree, it looks nice, and everything in it is just perfect. You know, if 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 I bite it, it's not going to kill me. I mean, according to what he's saying, so I'm going to bite it, huh? Because her heart, huh? Her heart was not in line with God's spirit at that particular time. The devil was able to seduce her and cause her to do something that she knew she should do. And I'm saying to us tonight, if we're not careful, saints of God, that devil will cause us to do and say some things that we won't be able to recover, okay? So it's important that we hear what the scripture's saying tonight. And this is all about the tongue and the heart, okay? <laughs> and don't we just found out that heart is deceitful Okay, it's deceitful and, and wicked. Okay, all right. 
And again, it gets at ninth verse again, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? In the 10th verse, I, the Lord, search the heart, okay? I try the reins. That is the very intent in the heart, even to give every man according as his ways and according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Okay, so there you go. Now listen, what we do starts, number one, it starts in the mind. Okay, that's where we get the idea. If it's good, okay, let it get into the heart. If it's not, we got to resist that thing. Huh? That's what James says, resist the devil and he'll flee. So if that thing gets into the heart and whatever gets into the heart is what's going to come out of the mouth. And listen to this. The, the tongue, okay, the tongue is actually at the mercy of the heart, <laughs> if you follow me. Because the tongue speaks what the heart feeds it, okay? So that's why the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So the tongue is what's delivering what's in us. And it's very important, says of God, that what's in us comes out and it's in line with God's word. Okay, so I just want to get that out to you. All right, listen, let's go. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 12. Matthew 12, and we're talking basically the same thing, and then we're going to finish up with James. And we should not be here long because these are very simple. And the most important thing is not so much what I say or what we talk about, it's what the Bible says and how we understand what the Bible says. Okay, so we're in Matthew 12, and we're going to be reading uh, from verse 34 through 37. Okay. And it says, oh goodness, you know what? I'm in Mark. I got to get in Matthew. Matthew 12. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Matthew 12 and verse 34. And you can, uh, you know, you can go back and read the chapter. It just there's a lot more in here, but just basically we want to focus on this, these uh, uh, topics on tonight. Uh, Matthew 12, 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? And th that right there speaks to who we are, who we were, who we were when we were born into the world. See, we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. There was no, nothing good about us, nothing. There was no good thing in mankind, okay? So all the good that we did was even not even uh, counterworthy to God. And he's saying here, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? So nothing good can come out of an evil heart. That's what he's saying here. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. This is what we were talking about. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You can't help it. You're going to speak what's in you. And that sense of God, we can measure what we say. We can decide what we say and how it's going to be received. And we know the intent of our words. If we want to hurt, we're going to speak words that are hurt. If we want to comfort, we're going to speak words that are going to comfort. So we know, we control this. Uh, we have access to control what we say so that we can be a benefit or a blessing to others and glorify God in the process. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, boy, listen. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. It's in our control, saints of God. It is in our control. If we allow the Spirit of God to run everything about us, then we're going to be on safe ground. But listen. God is no respecter of person. 
even if I don't say it, if it's in my heart to say at some point, I got a problem. And this is why I'm telling you, I'm telling you and I'm telling us, we must be very, very careful about what we do from this point forward, because we are right on the brink of the, of the rapture, saints of God. You can see all these things that are, are being put together. You can see them there. And it's, it's just, there's no time to be lax in any of what we are required to do by the word of God. So again, every idle word, huh? every idle word, I mean, everything that we've ever spoken in this life is going to be judged. My goodness, saints of God, there's been, been a whole lot of words spoken. But at this point now, at this juncture in our lives, we know what the cost is. Uh, before we could have said what we wanted to say, that's why we were pretty good at profanity and stuff. And we say what we want and we can joke and be uh, uh, jokesters. Now, last week we talked about the uh, uh, jesting. So that's different. You know, humor is good. And laughter is good. But I'm talking about the excessive, that excessive behavior. So we have to be real careful. Um, because what we do, what we say, it has to be in line with God's word, and he's going to judge it. And there's no excuse, because we control our lives through Christ Jesus. I'm putting it to you that way. Through Christ Jesus, we control things that we do here on earth. Because Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And says of God, that's where we have to be with what I'm talking about with our whole heart. There's no time and no room for any more nonsense. The way we speak, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we carry ourselves in public and, and behind closed doors. God is watching and he's going to judge it and he's going to be fair because he's going to judge us for what we've done. Here it is again. For by thy word, we're, no, here it is. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And the house of God is going to be judged first. So we want to make sure that we got some good, got, got a good report. Uh, we, want to, we want to hand in a, a good resume, if you will. Okay. All right, look. Um, all right, now we're going to go to James. Now, listen, I just want you to hear these things, okay? Hear them, and you go back and you ponder them, you go back and read them, you go back and, 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 and put some time into these verses of Scripture. And you can read, you know, a before and after. I'm just bringing the Scriptures that the Lord gave me to bring to your attention because it's very, very important, saints of God, that we learn to bring this little member under control. Now, James really gets down... He gets down with it uh, when he describes his tongue. We're, that's where we're going to go now, James, the third chapter. And uh, James was a, a, a he was a strong teacher amongst the Jews, and he, he was he was this is brother Jesus' brother, and he was uh, he, he spoke very very plain, and he was he was trying to get people to understand that we have to come completely out of all that we did before we came to Christ, all of it. All of it, saints. We can't have any of it. All right. So what do we? All right. We got we got some things that we did in the world that we're that we're ashamed of. You know, some of us might have some tattoos, and we might still have some holes in our ears from where we were wearing uh, the, the jewelry and stuff. Huh? That, don't worry about it. Huh? That stuff's going back to the dust. Huh? But what's in you now? God put life in you, and He's not looking at your 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 exterior now. He's looking at your heart, and that heart uh, is going to reflect Him. Uh, so when people see you, they're going to see what Jesus is in you. So when you, with Jesus in you, you're not going to look like, act like, talk like, or walk like the world. Uh, because you're going to be a child of the living God who is living in you. And I just can never stop saying this. God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, is living in every born-again believer. Thank you very much. And you have to believe this thing and know this from the very depth of your heart. And that's why with nothing that we do can get by him because he's in there trying to control what we do. And if we go against what he wants us to do, then that's going to be judged 
in the day. And God's not going to make us serve. He wants us to choose to serve. Okay. So here we go. James is going to whip us a little bit. So I want you to pay attention. Listen to what James is saying here and understand that this applies to us today. Okay. James is, is uh, 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 he, was, he was teaching the disciples, uh, that, yeah, God's disciples after the church was established. So now this is coming to the church. So James is saying here, third chapter, verse three. Oh, I'm sorry, third chapter, verse one. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, thank you very much, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Saints of God, that scripture right there is it encompasses everything. Because if we're able to bridle the things that we say, that means that the heart is clean. Think about that now. Think about that. If I can, if I can, if I can hold my, my criticism, if I can hold my complaint, if I can hold my judgmental attitudes, and before I speak them, give them to God so he can clean them out of that heart of mine. And that's what he's saying here. For in many things we offend all. In many things. But it says, if any man offend not in word, think about it. The same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. So if we can bring this tongue under subjection, huh? then we got the body. We, we got it made. But this tongue is a tough cookie. And it's bridled. So here we go. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, as though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor lists. Even so, the tongue is a little member, but boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindle. Okay, excuse me. It says, and the, the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. This tongue is going to save us, or it's going to run us, okay? We're, going, we're either going to make it with the help of this tongue, or we're going to lose out because of this tongue. And again, it says here, for the tongue, uh, even so the tongue is a little member. Uh, and you know, look, look at that little fellow. Uh, and you know, you can't stop it from moving. You know, sometime before you go to bed at night, just stand in the mirror and open your mouth, stick your tongue out a little bit and see if you can stop it from moving. You, you can't do it. It just does what it wants to. It's just gonna move. You can, you can stop it. You can try to stop it if you want. It's just gonna keep moving. It says, and boast great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can look. Okay. A little spark can burn up thousands of acres uh, with one little spark. And the tongue is a fire. It is a world of iniquity. Uh, so is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body. Okay. And what does it say over here in the second verse? For if any man, is, uh, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. But if he's not able, okay, to bridle that tongue, he's going to set on fire of hell. And, it's, and he says, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it's set on fire of hell. Now this, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. That's this, that's this tongue that we have. And you know what? Because it delivers what's in the heart. And between the heart and the tongue, we're either going to make heaven or we're going to lose and go to hell. Those two members right there. So if we can bring the tongue under control, we got, to, we got control of the body. Huh? And again, if the tongue, if the heart and the tongue, we get them to agree in righteous things, okay, then the body is not going to do anything wrong either. 
because this is out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And with uh, we, we got to let this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus. So now we have moved from uh, uh, from from uh, 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 carnality, if you will, into spirituality. Because now we got the mind of Christ. We got a clean heart that is speaking peaceful and righteous words. Okay, so that's what it says here. You know, we, again, let me just read it to you. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole time. A whole body. Okay, let's go. For every, every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Okay, again, now, look. We're not actually blessing God if we have an unclean heart, but with the tongue, we we send up a praise. It's a it's a hollow praise, if you will. So if our heart is not right, uh, our hallelujah is not going to reach heaven. Okay, so after, that's why we got to get this heart right so that God can receive our praise, uh, so God can receive our prayers. And again, if things aren't going right, examine yourself, myself, and make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be in the Lord, and then just keep moving forward, because we know that God knows all things. And listen, uh, the, the Bible lets us know trouble's going to come, and all things work together for good to those of us who love it. So look, if, every, if something is going wrong, I'm in the Lord, it's going to work out to my good anyway. So we need to learn how to bring this tongue under control so God can bless us, so that we can have those roots. huh? by the water, spreading out under the river. So when trouble comes, we're still producing fruit. Okay, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not so to be. Think about what he's saying. Huh? If we have Christ in us, how can we do things that are not godly? Huh? It's not him that's causing us to do it. It's his enemy. And where is his enemy working? In the flesh. Huh? The spirit of God is in us trying to get us to do God's will. And the spirit of the enemy is in the flesh trying to get us back to doing his will. Huh? So again, you know, it, it, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. And he says, my brother, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? No, we know it doesn't. Can a fruit tree, my brother, bear olive berry, either a vine fig? So can no fountain both yield salt and fresh water, or salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and a diet and a do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. All right, his, his conversation is his lifestyle. Huh? His lifestyle. And listen, a meek spirit. A meek and a mild spirit will keep you from saying things that are brash and harsh. You know, you know, he wants to be a, he, the Lord wants to beautify the saints with a, 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 a meek and a quiet spirit. Huh? And the Bible says, which is in the sight of God, a great price. So this is what we need to do. We need to let God have this tongue of ours. Huh? And even though it's going to keep moving, He'll cause it to move in the right way. So we know that we can do and say what God gives us to do and say so that it won't cause anybody to stumble. Now, listen, if you're telling somebody something about the word and they don't understand the word, they get offended. I like that. That's fine. Uh, but you're not telling them anything wrong. You're telling them something that they need to hear. They don't want to hear it, so they're going to be offended. But you have done God's will. And you're not going to hold it against them because they didn't hear you and believe you. You understand that it's the devil working in them. So it's not, we are not, again, we are not fighting against one another. Huh? We're fighting against the devil that's in people. Huh? But we don't want that fellow to get in us and cause us to react in a way that we should not react. Okay, let's go. 13 again, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye be, all right, if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not 
and lie not against the truth. Okay, the Bible tells us somewhere not to let any root of bitterness spring up in us. See, this this iniquity, is this iniquity, it get, if it can get in, it, it, it starts small, you know, it starts small, and all it wants to do is get in, okay? And once it gets in, and if we don't address it right away, it's going to take root. And the longer we let it stay in there, the deeper root it's going to get, and it's going to be hard to get that thing out. You know how easy it is to get in trouble? It's easy to get in trouble and real hard to get out. You know? So that's the kind of thing that we want to make sure we don't let any root of bitterness spring up in us. 14 again, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Where is that? In your heart. And how is that? How am I going to know if it's in the heart? Because it's going to come out. The tongue is going to present it. Uh, the tongue is going to project what's in my heart. And people will know what really is in me. I can say hallelujah. I can carry the Bible. But if I'm in the street cussing and fussing and fighting, uh, if I'm using bad language or not even using bad language, but just speaking things that are just not friendly and not kind and not edifying, it's the wrong spirit. And it's going to show me up. I can say I, I mean I can say I love the Lord all I want, but I got to be able to demonstrate that so that people can see it. Not so much hear it; they still got to see it. Okay, this wisdom. Okay, let me do fourteen again. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. So again, now think about it. If we allow these things to take place in us, we are serving the devil, okay? And look, I don't care what anybody says. If we're doing these things, if we have bitter strife and envy in our heart, we are on the side of the devil, okay? Okay, and you, you could dress it up any way you want, but until that iniquity and envy and strife gets out of that heart, we are servants of Satan, okay? So we got to be careful and understand, saints of God, this is coming from God. And God said, I want you to have a meek and a quiet spirit in you. And the only way you can get that is that you have to let the mind of Jesus Christ rule in you, okay? Huh? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Huh? And we know what, was, what Jesus was like. We know what he went through and why he went through it so that we can go through our tests and our trial just the way he did. All right, almost finished. We're going to read up here the last few verses. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Okay, <laughs> goodness. You know, but the Bible, uh, God hates people who sow discord amongst the brother. Uh, and, you know, some of these things that we say, some of these little things that we get in our heart toward our brothers and sisters, you know, this one didn't do that right, that one didn't do this right. Now, come on. Uh, we didn't do things right. It all comes, it just makes a full circle. Why? Because we're all, we, we were all sinners. And even now, we are all capable of sin. So if I'm going to judge you and criticize you, who's judging and criticizing me? I need to take care of my own self. Uh, and each one of us has to save him or herself. Huh? That's what the Bible says. Save yourself from this crooked generation. 17 verse says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Now this is godly. This is Jesus. This is the spirit that's in us. This is who, look, this is who ascended into the earth to pay the price for mankind so that man would not have to die and go to hell. Okay, this is the spirit that came down from heaven. This is the God that created the heaven and the earth. Everything about him is first pure, is then peaceable, is gentle, and easy to be entreated. He's full of mercy and good fruits with partiality and with, I'm uh, sorry, without partiality uh, and without hypocrisy. Okay, so listen, if we go around pretending that we're all right with God and we got these nasty, wicked things in us, uh, that's hypocrisy. Uh, we're pretending to be something that we're not. 
we're almost as bad as men trying to be women and women trying to be men. And that's that's kind of extreme, though, because God says that that's an abomination. <laughs> you know, that's that's a, a sin that is exceedingly sinful. But the point I'm making here is that if the heart is not pure, if the heart is not completely pure, then we're hypocrites. And this is, listen, again, we're working toward that end. Nobody is going to say that we have to be that way now, because even if we're living up to all that we have heard, we still have that sin, uh, that's, uh, uh, that sin, uh, I don't want to say nature now, but we, that's this, this sin is still present in the flesh. Let me just put it to you that way. So you're always going to be battling. You can never let your guard down. That's why the scripture says be sober and be visible. So we have to think about what we're doing. We have to think about what we're saying. We have to think about who we're talking to. Huh? Some people you can talk to, you got to know who you're dealing with. Some people you can talk to and you can speak boldly to. Them. Some people you have to speak boldly, but in a different way. Huh? And then you don't want to argue with anybody. Huh? You can you can just back out of it, but if you have to, if you're somebody that has to have the last say, you got a problem because there's a bad spirit in you. Okay, so we got to understand it. It's things of God is going to take a concentrated, concerted effort for us to get these little things. And I'm telling you, Elder used to talk about the little things all the time because he knew that these little things were going to linger. And they were going to make us feel like, well, that's that's really nothing. But if it's not aligned with the word of God, it is a big thing. Every idle word, okay, okay, not not just the intentional words, either the words that we just speak out, uh, idle, don't really have any meaning, but we spoke it anyway. He's going to judge it. Okay, okay, I'm finished now. Let me go. I'm going to read 16 through 18. We're going to close out. We're going to let you talk. If you have anything you'd like to add, we're going to discuss it tonight. And then we're going to let you go. But again, God wants us to be fully aware of what we're doing. Fully aware of what we're doing. Don't take, don't, 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 don't let anybody tell you something that you know is not right. Don't let anybody tell you that you can get away with anything because you cannot. Your words, huh? And look, sometimes, you know, you may have it in your heart to say it, just don't say it. But it's in the heart. That's where God is going to judge. That's where he's going to look right in there. Uh, and he said he judges the reins. That means the very depth, the very intent, where that intent started. He's got that thing. And he knows that you held on to it because you wanted it. Okay, I'm fussing, but I just want you to hear. It's very important because we're running out of time. Last three verses and we're going. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Don't forget, we are peacemakers. As much as lieth in us, we are to live peaceably with all men. So if I'm a peacemaker, I'm not going to be bounding and fussing and causing trouble amongst the saints, especially amongst your saints. We're trying to all trying to get to heaven. And every one of us is trying to get to heaven. And I don't want to be the crab that pulls the, the, the you're almost out of the barrel. When you're almost you're at, the, you're at the rim, you're just about ready to fall off out of the barrel. And I reach up and pull you back in for some sinful nonsense. Okay. <laughs>